Today on Alaskan Ballistics, hand loads Hornady 9mm 115 grain with accurate number 7. Going to test out of 6 barrel lengths. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Alaskan Ballistics. My name is Chuck. Thank you for stopping by. With the ammo crisis, I had stocked up on reloading supplies even before I had a reloading bench and table to get everything done. And one of the things I found at one of my favorite local shops was 115 grain XTP. And this is one of my favorite bullets to reload because it's about the only hollow point bullet that's going to stay together most of the time. Not all the time. At high velocity, it will break apart. But it's one of the only hand loading bullets that you can get that you can get reasonable energies and velocities from. We loaded it up with accurate number seven with exactly what the Hornady manual said. Here is a hand load with accurate number seven. Most of these I gave to Chuk because me and him split a lot of the hand loading resources. So Chuk has a bunch of these stocked up. Hopefully he doesn't trade them like he normally does. We shot these out of a Springfield Hellcat that my cameraman had, the Beretta APX Centurion you see here, then we also shot it out of a Glock 19, a Beretta APX full size, then we shot it out of an M&P 2.0 full size, 5 inch barrel and a 5.25 inch barrel Glock 34. So we did a lot of tests with this ammo. My microphone did not work the day we were out there, so I might be dubbing over a lot of the things in this video. I apologize for the poor quality on the audio. Just to show you what you can get with a good hand load, and if you can find the components, it's a good way to stock up on hollow point ammo for your 9mm. A lot of people are stocking up on full metal jackets, but full metal jackets won't do you a lot of good in an SHTF situation. A good way to stock up on hollow points for such a situation is to hand load them like share and subscribe let's get on with the video all right here we go six barrel test 115 grain nine millimeter xtp here we go glock 34 we're gonna go biggest barrel to smallest bar barrel this time first shots from the glock 34 as a matter of fact and an error 1268 1337 1331 and 1315. Wow, I did not expect him to get that much. Thought the 1268 was probably a normal reading. Let's see how it does out of the 5 inch Smith and Wesson. Here we go, 5 inch Smith and Wesson, same test. Same ammo. 1360, 1347, 1324, 1312, 1337. So wow, it did a little better than the Glock 34. Probably the tighter lockup and stainless steel guide the rod, I would say. Now we have the 4.25 inch barrel, kind of your standard duty barrel, length Beretta APX. Here we go. 1317, 1267, 1276, 1272, and 1280. Wow, that was a lot better than I expected. These are rated for 1,200 in the reloading manual. All right, here we are, Glock 19, four inch barrel, 1,295, error, 1,254, 1,322, and 1,284 again. Wow, these are way hotter than the loading manual said they were going to be. I'm impressed. Here we go, Beretta APX Centurion, 3.7 inch barrel. Here we go. 
error. Also an error. 1263. Another error. 1275. We'll get a few more in that gun. Hold on. So, here, three more shots. APX the interior, and here we go. 1239. Error again. 1240. There we go. So it's getting lower, but it's still higher than the loading manual said. Now we have the Springfield Hellcat, smaller barrel. Let's see how good it does. Error again. Another error. Might need the fins. Yeah, I don't have them with me. Twelve eighteen, right here, close. Twelve twenty-two. I mean, for a pocket pistol, that's how close you're going to be. I just don't think it was going straight over the chronograph very well. So it's me with Springfield triggers, probably. I just can't do them, even though they're they feel better than a Glock trigger. I just can't do them. There's something about them I just jerk them. Same thing with the APX. So here we go. A couple more rounds for the Hellcat here, Springfield Hellcat. 1236, 1201, 1229, 1171, that's the grade I expected them to be. And I don't didn't have the slide lock open because of my tight grip. There we go. Wow, those were way faster than I expected. They were at the right powder charge, so we'll see. They were a tenth of a way a grain for maximum, so. The maximum was supposed to get 1,200. So who knows? Actually, not bad. So, what would you think in the comments? It was all federal brass. You know, not bad. Still had some standard deviation issues. Maybe Chuck's machine needs to work on Chuck's machine. Chuck needs to work on his powder charges in the machine. So here is the chart. This is what I call our add-up slide. You can see all of the numbers here that you might have expected. It's funny how all of them, even the 3.0 inch barrel Springfield Hellcat, did better than what the loading manual told me. I did look it up. The loading manual was designed for a 4 inch barrel according to the Hornady loading manual. And you can see what we got there. I think it was very interesting that the Smith & Wesson 5 inch barrel got more than the Glock 5.25 inch barrel, which is typical and I think it's just a better lockup with that steel guide rod that the Smith & Wesson 2.0 has. Check out last week's video comparing those two guns. Here we go, we got the Springfield Hellcat. 115 grain XTP AA number seven. Let's see how it does. We got pork ribs and water jugs, pork ribs, pork loin water jugs. Sorry, I didn't bring a clothing barrier like an idiot, so show me in the comments. Here you go. All right, looks like it went right through the meat. Let's see what it did. All right. So sorry, my microphone recorded nothing but static during this. So I'm dubbing over it. You can see the entry and exit hole there was very good on the ribs. It tore apart the pork loin extremely well, and it went through the first jug of water. It went through the second jug of water, and you're going to see here that I find it on the table, back in between the jugs of water, and there's the bullet, nice and held together. We'll weigh it and measure it when we get back to the house. Glock 19, 115 grain, XTP, let's see what we got. All right. Well, it definitely went through and through the first bottle and into the second. Spun that first bottle around. Let's see what it did. All right. So 
So here we are recovering the bullet from our second test with the Glock 19. You can see I hit right in the middle on the ribs there. It really started to expand through the ribs very well. Dumped a lot more energy, knocking everything off the table. You can see the expansion through the pork. It did uh, very well in the pork loin as well. And then it went through and through the first jug and it turned it around on the table, dumping all that energy that it had. And we found it in the second jug here. So not quite as much penetration because the bullet was going faster, therefore it expanded faster and therefore it slowed down faster. That tends to be a little bit of a theme with bullets. If they're going faster, they expand much faster and don't penetrate as much. Very good looking bullet. We'll get it back to the house and weigh it as well. Here we go, Smith & Wesson 2.0, and it is five inch, and this was the one that was the fastest shooting, faster shooting than the 5.25 inch Glock, probably with the tighter lockup, stiffer recoil rod in there, that helps a lot with that velocity. So here we go, pork ribs, pork loin, and the water bottles behind it. Let's see what we do here. Right in the middle, it looks like. Let's see what we did. So here we are recovering the bullet from the Smith & Wesson. You can actually see I hit the ribs dead center. A little bit of expansion going through the ribs as you can see. Now here's the pork loin and you can see that it is expanding pretty good going through there and you can already see the exit wound having a lot more expansion. And then here is the first water jug and it is into the second water jug. So just like the Glock 19, it only went into the second water jug, as opposed to the Springfield Hellcat, where it went through the second water jug. Again, the faster the bullet's going, the more it expands, the more likely it is to jacket separate. When you see the bullet come out, you will see that it is jacket separated, and that's just pushing the bullet that fast. So we got to actually make sure that we don't push these too fast, just like SIG bullets they tend to jacket and core separate okay we have the 115 grain hornady xtp out of my hand loads and let's see how it's going here 102.7 for that one a little bit more expanded 105.7 not bad and here's the one that jacket separated on us 90.1 so not not bad weight retention regardless so not bad weight retention let's see the jacket itself weighs 24.1 grains the lead core weighs 65.9 grains just something to think about there if you do have jacket separation xtp supposed to be pretty well bonded but it will have jacket separation if it's going too fast there we are 53.6 not bad on this one i think this was the glock 19 bullet i'd have to go back and check the footage i didn't mark them very well like an idiot so not bad all the way around not bad not bad. I was surprised the kind of velocities we were getting. They didn't all jacket separate. Here's the separated jacket one. It's like the widest point of the of the jacket is 0.532. The widest point of the lead is 0 0.4444. 0.473. All right, I think these are pretty good bullets. You guys tell me in the comment section what you think. Are these really, really good bullets to you? I like Hornady XTP. I always have. I think Federal HST is a little bit prettier when it opens, but this stuff might penetrate a little deeper. Let me know if you want to see a ballistics gel test with all the different ammo that I have in 9mm, even though 9mm is hard to come by at the moment. Thank you for watching the video. 
Really like this ammo. I'm really impressed with it. I do need to shoot it at night to see if the accurate number seven has a lot of flash like the accurate number five did when I loaded it in 45 a long time ago before I ever had a channel. Just thank you guys for stopping by. Let me know what you think of this bullet in the comments. We do have 124 grain loads to test and 147 grain loads to test. And eventually we're going to load up some 90 grainers in 9mm as well with this XTP. Let me know if you want to see those all tested together in ballistics gel. Or if you'd rather see separate videos with different barrel links. Let me know in the comments what you would like to see us test that with. Like, share, and subscribe. We are on Patreon. If you feel called to help support us, that'd be great. You can also support us by our links on MeWe. We have a lot of affiliate links. I post them all on my MeWe page, so make sure you go check out the MeWe. We are on Instagram, Facebook, Patreon, Subscribe Star, The Parlor, The Jump. And if you want to contact us, you can contact us. Best of personal message us on Facebook or Instagram. God bless. Take care. We will see you at the range.